Get ready for something really deep. Scientists finally reveal the main secret of the Mariana Trench. The curiosity of human nature makes people look for secrets and mysteries far away from home, like in outer space or on other planets. But did you know there's another source of the unknown, much closer but still largely unexplored? Scientists have mapped only 5% of our planet's seafloor. And if you've ever considered the ocean plain and boring, the video you're about to watch will blow your mind. The Mariana Trench is the deepest area you can find on Earth. Although almost everybody has heard the name, we have shockingly little data about this dark, underwater place in the western Pacific Ocean. And no wonder. It's a monumental task mapping the seafloor and taking pictures when the water pressure at the bottom is more than 1,000 times greater than that at the surface. That's a lot of pressure! At 1,580 miles long, that's five times longer than the Grand Canyon, and 43 miles wide, the Mariana Trench houses the deepest parts of our planet. And the deepest part of the world's deepest trench is what's known as the Challenger Deep. Are we getting the point across that this thing is really deep? In 2014, researchers from the University of New Hampshire published the results of a seafloor mapping that showed that the depth of the Challenger Deep is 36,037 feet. Yikes! That means, if we compare that to the highest point on Earth, the top of Mount Everest at 29,026 feet above sea level, the Challenger Deep is still 7,011 feet deeper than Everest is tall. If you could descend into the waters of the trench, you would immediately be crushed to death. Oh, that hurts. All right, let's start that one again. If you could descend into the waters of the trench, you would come across active mud volcanoes, underwater vents puffing out carbon dioxide and liquid sulfur, and marine life that look absolutely extraterrestrial. One of the most unusual species is a snailfish that lives 5 miles underwater. For comparison, that's higher than most clouds from the Earth's surface. In November, scientists officially documented the deepest living fish in the world. It's a cute pinkish creature with skin so translucent that you can see its internal organs. This fish is about the length of two cigars and seems extremely fragile. But don't let its appearance fool you. In fact, this snailfish can survive water pressure that would be as heavy as having 1,600 elephants standing on it. But that's not all. There was another fish species scientists managed to film at the same depth. Its body was so delicate that someone compared it to thin paper floating through the water. Since it hasn't been caught yet, the fish doesn't have an official name. Scientists are just calling it the ethereal snailfish. Or how about Bob? Bob the fish. Yeah. That's not the only recent discovery to do with the Mariana Trench. In 2016, researchers announced that they found the source of a mysterious metallic sound that had been the instigator of numerous conspiracy theories. Or so they believe. This noise has an amazingly wide range of frequency. Kind of like me. It starts with a deep moan at 38 hertz. Oh, that hurts is followed by three other pretty crazy-sounding noises and ends with a metallic finale that reaches as high as 8,000 hertz. <laughs> this cryptic cacophony of sorts lasts from 2.5 to 3.5 seconds and sounds so alien that it'll make your blood run cold. Despite the enigma surrounding this phenomenon, scientists believe that the dwarf minke whale is responsible for this noise. This species mating call is really similar to the Star Wars sounds recorded in the depths of the Mariana Trench. I am your father. This explanation seems rational and logical enough, except for one glaring flaw in the theory. If it's a mating call, why is it heard throughout the year? The mating season of dwarf Mickey whales is in the winter. 
scientists themselves can't explain it, therefore leaving grounds for doubt. To this day, no one has seen any material proof that it's definitely the whale making this weird sound. So, perhaps, it's aliens after all. So, do you believe that the whales are to blame for this extraterrestrial noise? Or do you think it's beings from outer space? Sound off in the comments below. And if you're fond of mysteries and hard-to-explain phenomenon, check out the links at the top of the screen. But we're not done yet. There are so many other unbelievable creatures lurking in the deep waters of the Mariana Trench. For example, the Holothrian or deep-sea cucumber is, again, a translucent creature that grows much bigger than the ones living in shallow water. But just like their shallow cousins, they shoot their guts out of their bodies to protect themselves from predators. Hey, get away from me! Take that! Blah. Ah, but don't worry, their organs regenerate really fast. Another interesting fact is that other organisms can live inside the bodies of holothrins, feeling perfectly at home. The deep-sea anglerfish has a really odd mating ritual. The male is incomparably smaller than the female and lives for the sole purpose of delivering sperm. Afterward, the male bites into the female so hard that he soon becomes a permanent part of her body, just like a parasite. Jeez, talk about a clingy boyfriend. The predatory tunicate is a gelatinous animal that sticks its body to the side of an underwater canyon or to the seafloor. Looking at them, you'd probably think they're some sort of jellyfish. But they're actually more closely related to humans if we consider their body structure. These creatures lie in ambush until some poor small fish gets itself stuck in their enormous hooded mouth. Now, the barrel eye fish looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. It's hard to imagine that nature could create a fish with a transparent head and barrel-shaped eyes sitting inside. These eyes are extremely sensitive and can easily notice prey in the darkness of the deep water. Seriously, this is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> All these creatures look like horror film monsters, but perhaps it's just the nature of their environment. The cute ones wouldn't survive in the harsh conditions of the Mariana Trench. At its floor, there are hydrothermal vents spewing out extremely acidic fluids. The temperature around them can be higher than 500 degrees Fahrenheit, while the typical seafloor temperature is never higher than 39 degrees Fahrenheit. One more unique phenomenon you can find only in the Mariana Trench is the champagne vent. Despite its cool name, it's got nothing to do with the stuff you drink on New Year's. The champagne vent is the only underwater place known to people where you will see liquid carbon dioxide. No wonder local inhabitants have to adapt if they want to survive, just like the 4-inch amoeba. Standard-issue amoebas are microscopic single-celled organisms, so 4 inches is actually ginormous for these things. While such elements as uranium, lead, and mercury would easily kill people and most animals, these deep-sea creatures aren't the least bit phased by them. Scientists have spotted these amoebas deeper than 6.5 miles, and who knows, maybe that's not the limit. Whatever we know about the Mariana Trench nowadays is still a small fraction of what there is to learn. Maybe someday, the deepest place on the planet will reveal all its secrets to mankind. But that day is yet to come. You're standing on the bow of the ship, admiring huge waves, and trying not to stare at that kraken over there. <laughs> nah, just kidding. You're in luck, and today you'll be part of a marine expedition exploring the deepest parts of the world's oceans. You'll start with the Indian Ocean. The Sunda Trench. It appeared here because of the movement of tectonic plates. Those are huge chunks of land that float on the ocean of lava deep beneath the surface. Tectonic plates are like jigsaw puzzles that cover the whole surface of our planet, and they move all the time. When two puzzle pieces collide with each other, one of them eventually goes under the other. 
the tectonic plate underneath starts to bend, it goes down, and water fills the void. Many years after this happened in the Indian Ocean, there's a nearly 24,000 feet deep trench in that place. It's like 24 Empire State Buildings stacked one on top of each other. This trench is so deep that the technology didn't allow people to send a crewed submarine there until 2019. Research has confirmed that the Sunda Trench is the deepest point in the Indian Ocean. The constant movement of tectonic plates in that region causes tsunamis with high waves and earthquakes of magnitude even greater than 8. Scientists also believe they might have discovered life forms that have never been known to science before. Those are new species of snailfish and ascidians. This last one is a living organism that looks like a small bag. Put on a warm jacket, you're heading north. About 100 miles away from Svalbard, a Norwegian archipelago, there's the deepest point of the Arctic Ocean, the Molloy Hole. The first and only man to descend there used a $50 million submarine. He descended to a depth of more than 18,200 feet. This is the height of the mountains in Bhutan in South Asia. Previously, this place was only explored with the help of sonar. A ship with special equipment stopped right above the trench and sent sound waves downward. These waves bounced off the ocean floor and returned to the ship. After analyzing how fast the wave traveled through the water and the time it took for it to return to the ship, scientists managed to calculate the approximate depth of the Molloy Hole. To determine the real depth more precisely, the researchers measured the pressure at the bottom. At the surface, it's one atmosphere. 30 feet underwater, the pressure doubles. At the very bottom of the Molloy Hole, the water pressure is 1,110 times greater than that at the surface. The South Sandwich Trench This one was created by the collision of the South American Plate and the South Sandwich Plate. A volcanic arch also appeared there. That's a chain of islands with high volcanic activity. Lava rushed out of the volcano and cooled when it touched water. It resulted in the appearance of new islands. On one of them, there's Mount Belinda. It's still an active volcano. Researchers kept exploring the trench with sonars until they found its deepest point at almost 27,000 feet. That's nearly 35 times deeper than the record depth for freediving. The leader of the expedition descended to that depth in a DSV limiting factor submarine. The deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean is near Puerto Rico. It's the Milwaukee Deep. The first crewed vessel descended there in 1964. The French submarine Archimedes managed to reach a depth of 27,200 feet. That's like 10 Burj Khalifas, which is the tallest building on Earth, stacked on top of one another. But the submarine never reached the bottom. More than 50 years later, a new expedition finally got to the bottom. It was 280 feet below the previous mark. This means the first expedition stopped only one soccer field away from their goal. The modern crewed submarine limiting factor set the record for the deepest dive, 27,480 feet. By comparison, the record for a scuba diver is only 1,089 feet. And the atmospheric diving suit, which looks like a small human-shaped submarine, allows you to get down to a maximum of 2,000 feet. The Kuro Kamchatka Trench is one of the deepest places in the Pacific Ocean. It's also one of the oldest. It was formed about 66 million years ago when two tectonic plates collided with each other. As a result, the Kuril Islands and Kamchatka Volcanic Arc appeared here. This is the region of some of the most severe earthquakes on our planet. The deepest point of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench lies at about 34,500 feet below the surface. And it's so wide that the whole Manhattan Island could fit there, twice. When two giant tectonic plates collided, several more trenches appeared in this region. For example, the Japan Trench. This is a continuation of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. In 1989, the first expedition visited this place. Three researchers on the submarine Shinkai 6500 managed to descend to a depth of 21,410 feet. That's like 21 Eiffel Towers on top of one another. 
In 2008, another expedition reached a depth of more than 25,200 feet. They discovered life there and even managed to film a group of Hadal snailfish swimming by. These creatures were as long as a big banana. Another trench in this chain is the Izu Ogasawara Trench. Its maximum depth is about 32,100 feet. It's as great as the height of 72 London eyes. In this trench, scientists discovered xenophyophores at a depth of 4 miles. These things that look like loofahs are actually living organisms that consist of only one cell. They can withstand extremely low temperatures and tremendous pressure. A pillar of water presses on these organisms with a force of 8 tons per square inch. You can compare it with a large truck parked on a matchbox. Sunlight doesn't reach these depths, and these little guys get all their energy from filtering water. The next stop is the Tonga Trench. This is the second deepest place on our planet, 35,500 feet. By comparison, the Olympic running track is 1,310 feet. You'd have to run 27 laps to get to the very bottom of the trench, the horizon deep. And still, there's life in this dark and cold place. Researchers have found several communities of nematodes there. These are roundworms that are even shorter than the eye of a needle. In the trench, there's also a strange object that got there from space. In 1970, an oxygen tank from one of the rockets that flew to the moon fell in this area. It sank somewhere in the depths of the Tonga Trench. The Serena Deep is right next to the Mariana Trench, and it's almost as deep. In May 2019, two explorers reached the bottom of the trench, 35,150 feet below the surface. Planes fly above the ground at the same altitude. The explorers spent nearly three hours in the Serena Deep. They took many videos and collected biological and geological samples. The team managed to get their hands on a piece of the deepest mantle rock in history. Now, you've arrived at the deepest place on the planet, the Mariana Trench. Let's dive in! You've descended more than 36,000 feet. Your destination is the Challenger Deep. The pressure there can crush an ordinary submarine with the ease of a truck running over a bag of chips. If you shoved Mount Everest into the Mariana Trench, the mountain's peak would still be hiding underwater. People first visited this place in 1960. At the bottom of the trench, researchers found some flat fish that looked like a flounder. It was clear that living organisms there had adapted to the extreme pressure and darkness at such depth. It resulted in fish being very small. There's almost no food in the trench. All they can munch on is some plankton and fish scales getting there from the upper layers of the ocean. After a Japanese probe took samples in the Mariana Trench, scientists discovered some other life forms. Those were foraminifera, single-celled organisms covered with something resembling a shell. An American filmmaker visited the trench in 2012. He used a single-seater bathyscape with a lot of research equipment, 3D cameras, and powerful lights. The intense pressure down there damaged some of the batteries and lights. But the man made it to the surface and brought back plenty of soil and water samples, as well as beautiful footage from the bottom of the Mariana Trench. In 2019, an explorer who had visited the deepest places of all the oceans on Earth set a new world record here, 35,853 feet. He became the first person in history to have been to the highest point on the planet, Mount Everest, and the deepest one, the Challenger Deep. He later piloted a deep-sea submarine to take scientists to that depth. A total of 16 people have been there by now. For comparison, 574 people have already been to space. And now, a bonus fact for you. The deepest hole people have ever drilled is the Kola Superdeep Borehole. It's 7.6 miles deep. That's like six and a half Brooklyn bridges. Legends say the borehole produces strange sounds, but no one knows for sure if it's true. Have you ever wanted to take a dive into the deepest parts of the ocean? Well, today, you're going to have this opportunity. Now, how good are you at holding your breath? Not that good? Well, not to worry. 
Hop aboard my submersible craft and join me in the voyage to the depths. Ready? Ooh, let's dive! Right now, just below the surface, you see that life is thriving here. Fish and marine animals abound, and hey there, swimmers are waving at us. But we won't be staying here for long. Bye bye At 65 feet, there's a whole new world opening before your eyes. Shallow coral reefs are standing beautifully not far from the shore. And hey, there are people here again! It's scuba divers this time, though. Water pressure isn't kind to divers without special equipment. 130 feet is the depths where we say goodbye even to recreational scuba divers. It's the maximum allowed for them. Take care, guys! 200 feet, and here's the first orca. These whales inhabit the relatively shallow waters of almost every sea and ocean in the world. Did you know that they're the apex predators, by the way? It means they have no natural enemies, and no one can take them down. At 230 feet, we meet whale sharks, the largest known fish species, weighing up to 60 tons. And they're also quite long livers. Well, yeah, I guess their livers are long at that. But actually, it's about their life expectancy. They can live about 130 years. Now, look outside. If you're a scuba diver, it's a real pro. Because at 330 feet, they'll have to be very cautious not to get decompression sickness. It occurs if you rise too quickly to the surface. And if you're lucky, you can also see a giant Pacific octopus. It dwells in cool water starting this deep and going down as far as 6,600 feet. And now, we're entering the dark part of the ocean. At 490 feet, just 1% of the light from the surface reaches us. All the rest is absorbed by water. Everything that's deeper will get darker and darker still. Oh look! At about 660 feet, there's a giant oar fish circling our submersible. These creatures are believed to be the source of all sea serpent sightings and also a lot of alliteration. Sometimes they swim up to the surface and freak out sailors and swimmers. No wonder. These fish can reach 36 feet in length, enough to scare the heck out of me, for example. Okay, now we're at 980 feet, and wait, what's that huge and gangling thing out there? Oh, I get it, it's a Japanese spider crab. Why a spider, you ask? Well, just look at those legs and the answer will come to you without further prompts. By the way, there's almost nothing more to them than legs. The body of such a crab is normally just one and a half feet across. Going deeper now, and at 1,640 feet, you're going to see the last of the blue whales. No, not really the last of them, I mean that's the deepest they can swim. They don't really need to dive that deep for food, which they have in abundance in shallower waters, but they still can. I guess it's just for the sake of showing how awesome they are. After all, they're the largest creatures in the history of Earth, both in the sea and on land. Shh, you hear this? These are the sounds fin whales are making to talk to their friends many miles away. They can do this thanks to the SOFAR channel, or deep sea channel, that generally starts at 1,970 feet, but can vary in depth. It's a layer of water where the speed of sound is at its minimum and sound waves can go thousands of miles before disappearing. At the depth of 2,723 feet, we have reached the point where the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, would not even show its tip on the surface if it were put underwater. Hey, let's try that! Now we're entering the really interesting part of the ocean, where no sunlight reaches us and strange creatures dwell. One of those is the giant squid, yes, that legendary type. It inhabits the depths of 2,950 feet. Just imagine the creature with eyes the size of frisbees. Sperm whales hunt down these beasts, but they certainly can fight back. What a sight it would be to see such an encounter! And that's where pitch darkness finally falls on us – the midnight zone. The pressure here is so huge that if you somehow end up being here without a submersible, well, you'll simply be crushed in a couple of seconds. And that without seeing a thing, too. Mm, not the best of prospects. Anyway, at 3,600 feet, there's West Mata, one of the deepest ocean volcanoes in the world. Its last eruption was in 2009, and it was even filmed by a remotely operated vehicle. 4,200 feet down below, and we see the ferocious great white sharks. 
these ultimate predators feel great at such a depth. Their eyesight is rather poor and they navigate by scent, so they really don't need sunlight to hunt down their prey. I don't see you, but I'll still eat you. <laughs> also, the leatherback turtles, the largest turtles in the world, dive at the same depth. I wonder if they do it to tease the great whites. Oh, see those huge nets? That's because we're now at the depth of 4,900 feet where the catch-all fishing method is used. The nets are here to be dragged along the ocean floor, catching everything unfortunate enough to be caught. I'll let you decide how detrimental this is to the ocean life here. At 6,000 feet, if we were in the Grand Canyon, we'd be sitting at its lowest and deepest point. Imagine that all the crevasses have been thoroughly filled with water and you'll get the perfect picture. Now, if we're really careful, then at the depth of 6,600 feet, we'll be able to see the black dragonfish, a nightmarish creature that dwells in the deep and dark parts of the ocean. And trust me, it's better off staying right here. It looks like something from a horror movie, and I'd rather it never cross my path. At 7,400 feet, we'll be saying goodbye to sperm whales. This is the deepest point they can dive, and frankly, they have no real business at such a depth. Maybe they hunt the black dragonfish, of course, or it hunts them? Nah, the difference in size is too big. Sperm whales can reach 62 feet in length, which makes them the largest toothed whales in the world. Not many creatures can counter that. It's good that our submersible has a powerful floodlight. Without it, we wouldn't have been able to see the astonishing beauty of the deep-sea coral reefs located at the depth of 9,900 feet. They can be found in every ocean, and it's a pity they can't be seen without special deep-sea diving equipment. Okay, going deeper still, and at 12,100 feet, we reach the average depth of the world ocean. From now on, the journey into the real depths begins. The general ocean floor has been passed, so now it's time to delve into the abyss. Now at 15,000 feet, the monsters out of your worst nightmares pop up. Anglerfish, for example, will scare the heck out of anyone. Its long and crooked teeth, along with a growth on its head that lures the prey, is enough to instill fear even in the bravest. But perhaps even more terrible is the creature called the black swallower. It's an eel-like beast that has a very stretchy stomach, and it can swallow prey that's twice its size. Look down below and you're going to see the deepest shipwreck ever found. SS Rio Grande in the South Atlantic sunk in 1941 and went as low as 18,900 feet. No wonder it was only found 55 years later. And now the deepest and darkest part of the ocean begins. We're diving into the Mariana Trench. Officially, it begins at about 19,700 feet deep. It's both the least explored and the most fascinating area for the scientists and adventurers alike. What lies at the bottom of it? Well, we're about to see, but while we're not there yet, I'll show you something else. For example, here's the deepest fish ever found. It's called a snailfish, and it dwells at 26,000 feet. Its body is translucent, so you can actually see right through its skin. Well, I must say I'm glad we didn't turn off the lights after all. This little guy is surprisingly cute for a creature that can withstand such pressure. Going lower and deeper you won't see any other kind of fish or vertebrate animal whatsoever. The pressure is just too much for such creatures. But there are shrimps and other invertebrates, not to mention microbes, that can dwell even in the deepest part of the ocean. And that part is the Challenger Deep. It's the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and its depth is 35,853 feet. Yes, we've arrived at the very bottom of the Earth. Few people have been here and very little is known about it yet. But scientists aren't going to stop, and there's hope we'll soon find out what secrets the depths of the ocean hold. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please! Alright, just listen up. The Guinness World Records Award for the deepest human invasion into the Earth's crust goes to the Cola Superdeep Borehole. Ooh. Its depth is 7.4 miles. You can find it in the icy part of Russia, where the winter temperature of minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit is a common thing. Well, that's chilling. Global scientists started to dig it in the 1970s. The grand plan was to reach a depth of 9.3 miles. 
it was a purely scientific project to study the Earth's crust and maybe get to the hot mantle. Well, when it's so cold outside, it kind of makes sense. Up to the depth of 4.3 miles, the drill easily coped with granite rock. Then, denser layers came and broke the drill. The scientists had to change the drilling pattern. In the end, it resembled a tree with many branches. The deeper it went, the hotter it became. The temperature went up to 350 degrees. The equipment was constantly out of order and work was stopped completely in 1992. If you see this legendary place with your own eyes, you'd hardly realize there's an abyss right beneath your feet. The borehole looks like a rather small and unambitious hole in the ground. The place is now abandoned, overgrown with moss and rust. It has its fair share of myths surrounding it too. One of them says people hear strange sounds like moans and screams from the depths. In reality, of course, none of this is true. At the time, many countries were engaged in the study of the Earth's crust. For example, Germany. They duly noted the experience of the Kola borehole and made a super-tech drill that could withstand extreme temperatures. A location was chosen in Bavaria at the junction of two tectonic plates. In the past, they were the shores of an ancient ocean. In the early 90s, a group of researchers began drilling a well there. But already at a depth of 4 miles, the Earth fought back. It deflected the drill from the vertical, and then the temperature made a surprise spike to 520 degrees. All these problems forced scientists to stop at a depth of 5.6 miles. In 1977, a company in Austria started drilling a well at a site with plentiful resources, or so they thought. They did find large gas reserves, but there was an unexpected problem. As the drill entered the chamber, the well collapsed. They tried again and made a new, even bigger borehole that went as deep as 5.3 miles. But ironically, they weren't able to drill into the gas chamber again. In Sweden, expectations from drilling weren't met either. At the site of a huge crater, 30 miles in diameter, they started the search for gas and oil. It's the largest crater in Europe, which must have appeared because of a meteorite. The well went deep, but unfortunately, nothing of interest was found. At 4 miles down, the drilling stopped. One of the deepest oil wells in the world is Bertha Rogers in Oklahoma. Its depth is almost 6 miles. In 1974, the Lone Star Company achieved such a stunning result in just over 500 days. For five years, it was the deepest borehole in the world, until the Kola Superdeep was drilled. Bertha Rogers could probably have gone even deeper, but the drill suddenly struck a molten sulfur deposit. It grew solid around the drill string, breaking the rig. If you can't get to the Earth's mantle from the ground, do it from the water. Project Moho was just about that. It got its name from Moho, the threshold between crust and mantle, and, well, a hole. You know, Moho. Well, anyway, the project was launched in the 1960s and was overseen by the U.S. National Science Foundation. The crust on the ocean floor is thinner than on land, and the mantle is closer. Scientists had hoped that a three-mile-deep underwater borehole would bring them there. They chose a location in the Pacific Ocean, where the bottom was at a depth of about 2 miles. There were two phases planned for the project, and the first was a success. A total of five wells were drilled, each not exceeding 600 feet in depth. Unfortunately, the second phase never happened. Too many problems were involved. So, apparently, there ain't no moho, um, holes. Today, underwater wells are commonplace. Their main purpose is extraction of oil and gas. The EVA 4000 American drilling platform is located in the Gulf of Mexico. This huge structure rises above the water at a height of a 20-story building. The platform moves around looking for oil at depths of over 6,000 feet. And when it finds a good spot, it's capable of drilling up to 6 miles into the seabed. Now, let's move to Africa. Here at the very south of the continent, there's a huge quarry, the Kimberley Diamond Mine. Now, it's easy to drill through the ground when you have the best equipment. But this hole was literally dug by hand. 
about 50,000 workers dug it tirelessly in the late 19 and early 20th centuries using ordinary shovels. And no, they hardly wanted to get to the opposite side of the earth. They were attracted by the enchanting brilliance of diamonds. One of the most famous precious stones, Tiffany, weighing 128.5 carats, was found in the Kimberley mine. The depth of the hole reached 790 feet. Just imagine how difficult it was to return from work. It was like climbing 66 floors on foot. When the work stopped, the bottom of the pit was partially filled with soil, and then water flooded the place. Today, it's a popular site among tourists, and surely, each of them secretly hopes to find a diamond there. With the industrial boom, oil became even more popular than diamonds. And the oil wells around the world are getting deeper. For example, in 2008, Qatar drilled the longest oil well at that time, El Shaheed. It was 7.6 miles long, and it only took them a little over a month. The vertical part of the shaft reaches 6.7 miles. Stretched up instead of down, the shaft would reach the height of commercial airplane flights. The record was broken in 2012 by the Z44 Shavo oil well. When they measured its length, the new hole beat the one in Qatar by about 300 feet. Just for a clearer picture, either of these two oil wells would fit almost 15 Burj Khalifas, or 40 Eiffel Towers. Moving on to Canada and high up into the sky to look at it from space. See those two huge holes? If you don't know, those are diamond mining sites. You might think that an alien invasion happened while you slept right through. This enormous place is on the island of Lac de Grave, not far from the Arctic Circle. This is a whole city with industrial and administrative buildings, a boiler house, living quarters for workers, and even an airstrip. In 2018, the largest diamond in North America was found here. It weighed 552 carats. Apart from diamonds and oil, the bowels of the earth have a lot of other useful stuff. One example is copper. Let's go to Utah and see the giant Bingham Canyon mine. Copper has been mined here for over a century. The width of this quarry reaches 2.5 miles, and it goes half a mile down. Just imagine how breathtaking a paragliding flight would be over this powerful structure. But the greatest treasure of the planet is, of course, fresh water. And to get to it, people would dig as deep as they have to. The deepest water well in the world is found in Great Britain. It was dug by hand in the 19th century. People just had to keep on digging because they couldn't get to water. And as a result, they reached almost 1,300 feet. When the water finally gushed from under the ground, the workers barely managed to escape from the well. Many of us spend a huge part of our life under the ground. Yeah, I mean the subway. The deepest underground station in the world is in Kyiv, Ukraine. It takes over 5 minutes for the escalator to lower you to the platform. After all, you're traveling nearly 350 feet down. Sometimes nature decides to dig something deep on its own. Most likely, the Mariana Trench is the deepest point in the ocean. Its bottom, called the Challenger Deep, is 6.8 miles below sea level. Sunlight never gets there. The pressure down below is more than a thousand times higher than on the surface. If you decide to dive to the bottom, you'll spend four hours of your time and a whole lot of money on the necessary equipment. Scientists have even found mountains there. By the way, if Everest was moved to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, we wouldn't be able to see its top on the surface. A little riddle. Can you dig water? The answer is yes, if it's in the form of ice. The Uran Observatory in Antarctica made it by digging boreholes up to 1.5 miles deep using hot water. Optical detector filaments pass through them. They capture elementary particles, neurons. In fact, this is a telescope that's directed not upwards, but downwards into the ice. But that's a completely different story. Hey, have you ever wanted to take a dive into the deepest parts of the ocean? Well, today, you're gonna have this opportunity. Now, how good are you at holding your breath? Not that good? Well, not to worry. Hop aboard my submersible craft and join me in the voyage to the depths. 
Ready? Who? Let's dive. Right now, just below the surface, you see that life is thriving here. Fish and marine animals abound, and hey there, swimmers are waving at us. But we won't be staying here for long. Bye bye At 65 feet, there's a whole new world opening before your eyes. Shallow coral reefs are standing beautifully not far from the shore. And hey, there are people here again! It's scuba divers this time, though. Water pressure isn't kind to divers without special equipment. 130 feet is the depth where we say goodbye even to recreational scuba divers. It's the maximum allowed for them. Take care, guys! 200 feet, and here's the first orca. These whales inhabit the relatively shallow waters of almost every sea and ocean in the world. Did you know that they're the apex predators, by the way? It means they have no natural enemies, and no one can take them down. At 230 feet, we meet whale sharks, the largest known fish species, weighing up to 60 tons. And they're also quite long livers. Well, yeah, I guess their livers are long at that, but actually it's about their life expectancy. They can live about 130 years. Now, look outside. If you're a scuba diver, it's a real pro. Because at 330 feet, they'll have to be very cautious not to get decompression sickness. It occurs if you rise too quickly to the surface. And if you're lucky, you can also see a giant Pacific octopus. It dwells in cool water starting this deep and going down as far as 6,600 feet. And now, we're entering the dark part of the ocean. At 490 feet, just 1% of the light from the surface reaches us. All the rest is absorbed by water. Everything that's deeper will get darker and darker still. Oh look! At about 660 feet, there's a giant oarfish circling our submersible. These creatures are believed to be the source of all sea serpent sightings and also a lot of alliteration. Sometimes they swim up to the surface and freak out sailors and swimmers. No wonder. These fish can reach 36 feet in length, enough to scare the heck out of me, for example. Okay, now we're at 980 feet, and wait, what's that huge and gangling thing out there? Oh, I get it, it's a Japanese spider crab. Why a spider, you ask? Well, just look at those legs and the answer will come to you without further prompts. By the way, there's almost nothing more to them than legs. The body of such a crab is normally just one and a half feet across. Going deeper now, and at 1,640 feet, you're going to see the last of the blue whales. No, not really the last of them, I mean that's the deepest they can swim. They don't really need to dive that deep for food, which they have in abundance in shallower waters, but they still can. I guess it's just for the sake of showing how awesome they are. After all, they're the largest creatures in the history of Earth, both in the sea and on land. Shh, you hear this? These are the sounds fin whales are making to talk to their friends many miles away. They can do this thanks to the SOFAR channel, or deep sea channel, that generally starts at 1,970 feet, but can vary in depth. It's a layer of water where the speed of sound is at its minimum and sound waves can go thousands of miles before disappearing. At the depth of 2,723 feet, we have reached the point where the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, would not even show its tip on the surface if it were put underwater. Now we're entering the really interesting part of the ocean, where no sunlight reaches us and strange creatures dwell. One of those is the giant squid, yes, that legendary type. It inhabits the depths of 2,950 feet. Just imagine the creature with eyes the size of frisbees. Sperm whales hunt down these beasts, but they certainly can fight back. What a sight it would be to see such an encounter. And that's where pitch darkness finally falls on us – the midnight zone. The pressure here is so huge that if you somehow end up being here without a submersible, well, you'll simply be crushed in a couple of seconds. And that without seeing a thing, too. Mm, not the best of prospects. Anyway, at 3,600 feet, there's West Mata, one of the deepest ocean volcanoes in the world. Its last eruption was in 2009, and it was even filmed by a remotely operated vehicle. 4,200 feet down below, and we see the ferocious great white sharks. These ultimate predators feel great at such a depth. 
their eyesight is rather poor and they navigate by scent, so they really don't need sunlight to hunt down their prey. I don't see you, but I'll still eat you. <laughs> also, the leatherback turtles, the largest turtles in the world, dive at the same depth. I wonder if they do it to tease the great whites. Oh, see those huge nets? That's because we're now at the depth of 4,900 feet where the catch-all fishing method is used. The nets are here to be dragged along the ocean floor, catching everything unfortunate enough to be caught. I'll let you decide how detrimental this is to the ocean life here. At 6,000 feet, if we were in the Grand Canyon, we'd be sitting at its lowest and deepest point. Imagine that all the crevasses have been thoroughly filled with water and you'll get the perfect picture. Now, if we're really careful, then at the depth of 6,600 feet, we'll be able to see the black dragonfish, a nightmarish creature that dwells in the deep and dark parts of the ocean. And trust me, it's better off staying right here. It looks like something from a horror movie, and I'd rather it never cross my path. At 7,400 feet, we'll be saying goodbye to sperm whales. This is the deepest point they can dive, and frankly, they have no real business at such a depth. Maybe they hunt the black dragonfish, of course, or it hunts them? Nah, the difference in size is too big. Sperm whales can reach 62 feet in length, which makes them the largest toothed whales in the world. Not many creatures can counter that. It's good that our submersible has a powerful floodlight. Without it, we wouldn't have been able to see the astonishing beauty of the deep-sea coral reefs located at the depth of 9,900 feet. They can be found in every ocean, and it's a pity they can't be seen without special deep-sea diving equipment. Okay, going deeper still, and at 12,100 feet, we reach the average depth of the world ocean. From now on, the journey into the real depths begins. The general ocean floor has been passed, so now it's time to delve into the abyss. I won't tell you not to be afraid because the scariest creatures of the deep dwell here, below the midnight zone. And it doesn't end there. The pressure on the upper limit of the abyss, at 13,100 feet, is like a whole regiment of elephants stomping on you. Not that you'd have the time to feel it, though. Now, at 15,000 feet, the monsters out of your worst nightmares pop up. Anglerfish, for example, will scare the heck out of anyone. Its long and crooked teeth, along with a growth on its head that lures the prey, is enough to instill fear even in the bravest. But perhaps even more terrible is the creature called the black swallower. It's an eel-like beast that has a very stretchy stomach, and it can swallow prey that's twice its size. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'd rather switch off the lights not to see anything this deep in the ocean. What? You want to see it all? Alright, if you insist. Look down below and you're going to see the deepest shipwreck ever found. SS Rio Grande in the South Atlantic sunk in 1941 and went as low as 18,900 feet. No wonder it was only found 55 years later. And now the deepest and darkest part of the ocean begins. We're diving into the Mariana Trench. Officially, it begins at about 19,700 feet deep. It's both the least explored and the most fascinating area for the scientists and adventurers alike. What lies at the bottom of it? Well, we're about to see. But while we're not there yet, I'll show you something else. For example, here's the deepest fish ever found. It's called a snailfish, and it dwells at 26,000 feet. Its body is translucent, so you can actually see right through its skin. Well, I must say I'm glad we didn't turn off the lights after all. This little guy is surprisingly cute for a creature that can withstand such pressure. Going lower and deeper, you won't see any other kind of fish or vertebrate animal whatsoever. The pressure is just too much for such creatures. But there are shrimps and other invertebrates, not to mention microbes, that can dwell even in the deepest part of the ocean. And that part is the Challenger Deep. It's the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and its depth is 35,853 feet. Yes, we've arrived at the very bottom of the Earth. Few people have been here, and very little is known about it yet. But scientists aren't going to stop, 
And there's hope we'll soon find out what secrets the depths of the ocean hold.